Portillo uh, with the title, The Emergence of Social Structure, Reconstructing the Myths of Preferential Attachment and Tried Exposure. Demi, you can start when you want. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So let me share. Okay. There we go. Can you can you see it? Yeah, but not full screen. Not full screen. Yeah, okay. Now full yeah. screen. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, hello everyone, and yeah, welcome to this uh, second session of social systems. Um, what I'm going to talk today is uh, about this um, theory that I'm proposing of social structure that deconstructs the myths of preferential attachment and tried closure as leading mechanisms of network formation. Okay? So this talk is based on a manuscript that I recently uploaded. Um, to SOC archive called Mechanisms and Emergent Properties of Social Structure, the Duality of Actors and Social Circles. And this manuscript in turn is uh, based on these three seminal works uh, that I used to put together the ideas that uh, were developed uh, by then. Uh, yeah, brought together those ideas uh, to, to build uh, this theory that I'm proposing. And this theory of social structure, uh, I think, I think uh, this, this quote by sociologist Bart von Heidsen uh, captures very well what I'm trying to, to explain here. And he says that human beings are social through and through. They cannot survive in isolation. They can only live in groups, in hordes, in tribes, and collectivities. Human beings are fundamentally interdependent. So with this idea, what I'm trying to approach is that um, uh, the concept that all social networks have a latent bipartite structure. So even if you take like a, a traditional one mode network, uh, we can think of the relationships between actors uh, having this uh, underlying bipartite structure. Uh, and then we have this duality uh, that is represented by the interactions uh, between individuals and collectivities. So actors participating in what we call like social circles or social foci. Yeah. And then we can model the social structure uh, uh, starting from a two-mode network where actors belong to, to social circles or participate in social circles. And then we can create a uh, one-mode one projected network with the actors uh, and the relationships between those actors are actually stemming from uh, their participation in those uh, social circles. And what happens uh, in this theory is that uh, the, the, the mechanisms of network formation are actually uh, forming the two-mode network topology. And here at least the, the, the main, uh, the leading mechanisms, which uh, first is homophily. And homophily uh, is related to the composition of the social circles in the two-mode network. Social activity, which is uh, the number of uh, social circles that an actor participates in and overlapping that it's when two actors participate together in two or more social circles. And the novelty here, and the novelty here is like bringing these concepts as, uh, of social activity and overlapping as leading mechanisms uh, to create this uh, two mode network. And then when we create the projection, uh, the macrostructures that we are um, uh, used to observe in social networks, they naturally arise. And I'm going to focus here in the uh, degree heterogeneity or popularity heterogeneity and uh, high clustering. And by high clustering, I mean like the high global clustering of the network. So starting with popularity heterogeneity, uh, popularity then results from social activity but, but modulated by so, the circle sizes and the overlapping. So let's, let's take a look first at social activity. So let's um, say that Alice and Bob are siblings and they belong to the same family and they go to the same school and then even take the same classes at school just to make things equal between them. Um, because we are going to see like the extra activities to compare both. And then Bob plays in orchestra with 15 other 
mates, let's say, right? While Alice, she plays football, she attends the, uh, the book club, and she uh, goes to the language courses because she's interested in learning Portuguese, right? And when we project, when we project this network or have is Bob participate in this clique of like the members of the orchestra, Bob and Alice have relationships between them and Alice has then uh, her participation in these different circles. So because Alice is more social active, she's also more popular than Bob, having here in this example, 20 extra connections while Bob has only 15. But then if you think about the circle size, then we have, we have a similar situation here, but instead of going to language uh, courses in a group, Alice prefers to take individual classes. And now, even though she has um, a higher social activity than Bob, now she's less popular. She has less uh, relationships because uh, she, uh, the, the circle that, Bob's, that Bob participated in, it's much larger than the other circles uh, that, Alice, uh, that Alice participates. And then we look at the role of overlapping. Um, so yeah, again, we have a similar scenario. And then again, we have the language course back to uh, with 11 students. Um, but what, what the difference here now is, let's say that all um, the football mates, there are also in the language course because they want to spend, I don't know, uh, a season in Brazil practicing football and so on. But then the, the level of overlap has increased. And because of this overlapping, even though now Alice has um, a higher social activity, her circles are in total are larger than uh, Bob's circle, she is still less popular because of this uh, overlapping. So actually popularity, my popularity, for example, I can calculate uh, by summing over all my social activity with the size of each circle, minus one to exclude myself. And then I have this inequality here to account for the overlap. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have still like an analyc analytical solution for, for the overlapping. It, I don't even know if it's gonna be feasible to do so, but the, the, the idea here is that all these leading mechanisms are in the equation, while we can say that if you think about it, preferential attachment is not playing uh, a relevant role whatsoever. Okay, so let's move to clustering. Uh, and then clustering emerges from a balance between circle size and social activity, and is favored by the overlapping and six cycles. And I'm gonna talk about six cycles in a moment. But what is important is it's again, the same leading mechanisms for, uh, for popularity is playing a role here in clustering. And if you take a, a circle size and social activity first, let's, let's, let's give this equation that's uh, well known, the equation of clustering, number of closed triplets divided by the number of total triplets. What happens is that the number of triangles is given by this relation of the size of the, the, the circle n, so n choose three. So if we have uh, small circles in the, our network, then okay, we don't have like a excessive number of triangles, but then if we have like large circles, like a school class or a, a large research group or whatever, suddenly uh, this, this, the, this number of, um, of triangles increases really rapidly, right? Because of the n choose three relation. So if we have a heavy tail distribution of circle size, where we have this presence of large circles, then we have a bunch of triangles, a massive number of triangles, and then cluster increases. On the other hand, if we have a lot of social activity, so in this example, we just have like a, an actor participating in two different social circles. And because of this participation, this actor is creating several open triplets so it's contributing to the denominator here in such a way that if you have a heavy tail distribution of social activity, that is, we have a high presence of highly active actors, then the cluster will, will decrease, All right? So that's, that's the balance that we have to look at uh, between uh, size of circles and activity of actors. 
And then we have overlap in six cycles. So six cycles, oh, it's not showing up here. What's going on? Oh, I don't know what's not showing up in the presentation. Yeah, it's not showing up, but I'm gonna show you like six six circles, uh, six cycles are these patterns here that we see we see often in two mode networks and social systems, and these patterns uh, they when we project they create the triangles, right? And and of course the triangles then we contribute to the number of closed triplets and we will inc favor increasing clustering, and. While, while on the other hand, let me now get back to, to the full screen thing. There we go. While, yeah, it's missing here again, but we can see it anyway. While when we have four cycles and four cycles is just another name for overlapping, when we have them, uh, this overlapping, they, they suppress the formation of open triplets. So in this toy network here, we can see that when we have this uh, for cycle or this overlapping, the clustering is already increasing. So the, the, um, the summary here is that large circles and small cycles overlapping in six cycles, they favor the increasing of the clustering in the network, while actors with high activity favor reducing clustering. And then Again, when we are, we're discussing this, uh, this um, mechanisms, we don't see a relevant role of um, triad closure. So the key takeaways of this uh, presentation, I want, I want to remind that uh, we can always think of ties between actors stemming from their participation in social circles. So we can uh, model general population large scale social networks as two mode networks and their projections, so the, putting them together side by side. And popularity and clustering are functions of uh, social activity, uh, homophily, which is part of the composition of circles and overlap. And the implication of those things, we have like several implications, but the direct implication uh, that we can, we can think of, and then those implications open up for several others is that uh, when we have large circles in society and we see a lot of those overlappings, then we have a higher fraction of strong ties. On the other hand, if we have like a, a lot of actors with a diverse uh, activity, uh, then we have more of those weak ties in the networks. And then of course, when we think about the balance of strong ties and weak ties in the network, this open up for all the several implications that come with uh, social processes like uh, segregation or diffusion uh, of knowledge, opinions, ideas, and so on, or even uh, the spread of infection, infectious diseases like we are seeing now, of course. Uh, so this opened up for several different uh, types of um, social processes that we can think. And that's what I had to uh, say today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Demi. Uh, we have time for one quick question. Maybe someone in the audience wants to unmute uh, and ask a question or write in the chat. Um, if not, Demi, I just have then a quick question. So in your last slide and the presentation was very, very interesting. Thank you. Um, you were saying uh, you were talking about uh, then a fraction of stronger and weaker ties with this kind of representation how then are you measuring this weaker or stronger ties are you kind of defining some kind of weight for the edges or how do you define then uh, in this representation yeah uh, the idea is to is 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 to leave like uh, the definition open right depending on the system that uh, someone wants to to explore right but of course we have like several methods of weighting the edges and it could be like a simple weighted or it could be i don't know uh, uh inverse of the size of the circles and yeah 
any kind. It, it, it's, it's actually the idea, the, the idea of the strong ties and the weight or the bandwidth of the ties, then of course will depend like uh, if someone is more interested in like more uh, intimate relationships like friendship and so on, or if someone is uh, concerned about like the spread of infection diseases that uh, any type of relation can actually play an important role there. So it's, it's actually uh, open for, for interpretation of the system that uh, someone wants to, to explore. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, they are also asking you to put the link to your paper in the chat, so maybe then you can do that. Oh yes, sure, sure. And thank you very much, Demi. We will now go to our second uh, speaker, uh, Carlos Gracia Lazaro, um, and he will present about effects of memory intolerance and second order reputation on cooperation. Carlos, you can now share your screen. Hi. Let's see. A moment, please. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. I'm going to talk about uh, cooperation and about a uh, theoretical work based on uh, experimental results, actually. Okay, as you know, uh, the presence of cooperation in hostile environments is an open question for science. Uh, it's present in many fields like biological, social, economic science, etc. And uh, many mechanisms have been proposed to, to explain this behavior that uh, from an uh, evolutionary point of view, the view is not so so evident. No, then we have a keen selection that uh, says that uh, cooperating among uh, relatives may preserve own, uh, our own genes, and uh, group selections uh, explains uh, cooperation saying that uh, cooperating in two groups may help the survival of, of the specimens of, of the groups. Then we have also as a mechanism direct reciprocity that uh, is based on the idea that uh, perhaps I may cooperate with you thinking in that uh, you will cooperate with me in a new uh, subsequent uh, interaction. And uh, this uh, idea cannot be applied to the cases when agents don't interact uh, repeatedly in, in paid ways uh, uh, situation. Now then uh, we have uh, the indirect reciprocity mechanisms that is based on the idea of reputation. That is, uh, I may cooperate with you not because I will expect you to cooperate with me in a subsequent interaction, but uh, perhaps there will be witness that uh, will uh, evaluate me positively and then in subsequent uh, interactions they will cooperate with me. And finally here uh, I quote uh, network reciprocity that uh, relies on the idea that the network structure of interactions may promote the, the arisal of, of cooperative clusters uh, becoming resilient to uh, free riders invasion. No? At the end, we have a lot of mechanisms because uh, the, the solution to, to the problem will depend on the particular problem we are dealing with. That is the mechanism for uh, cooperation among bacteria probably won't be the same that uh, those that apply for mammals or for fungi or, or for human interaction. No? Then here I'm going to focus on reputation that probably is uh, the mechanism from previous ones that uh, requires a higher cognitive level. Then perhaps it could be applied 
more uh, easily to, to humans than other uh, mechanisms that uh, uh, don't uh, need a, a so a high cognitive level. As you know, uh, game theory uh, is a tool to uh, modeling uh, cooperative uh, problems. And uh, when uh, studying uh, reputation, usually uh, game theory models uh, assume uh, the evaluation of, of cooperative actions without taking into account uh, second order neighbors, but only the first one. No? Then perhaps uh, for, for human interactions will be interesting taking into account uh, if free riders are acting in a way or another, depending to whom they are interacting. No? Then we have this theory of the complex uh, reputation, according to which uh, to measure reputation, uh, the agents uh, take into account not only uh, the actions uh, themselves, but to whom uh, they were directed. No? Then uh, they consider that some agents will evaluate a, a non-comparative action uh, in a way or another, depending on if it's uh, taken when facing a cooperator or a free leader, and the same for a cooperative action. No? Here we have a table uh, for, for, for this theory taken from, from this uh, nice paper that is uh, cited uh, below. And we can see that the the evaluation of, of an action, that is, if uh, a witness evaluates positively or negatively an action, will depend on the specific rule. Here we, we have uh, four uh, assessment rules, uh, shunning, stern judging, image scoring, and simple standing. That is, it will depend, the, that evaluation, on the rule, on the action of of the donor, of the active agent, but also on the image of the recipient. That is, then it won't be evaluated the, in the same way a cooperative action against a recipient with a good than with a bad uh, image, and the same for a, a defective action. That is the, the, the idea uh, under this theory, and uh, it has been studied in, uh, deeply in, in many ways uh, through different games, uh, as uh, Prisoner's Dilemma, Donation Game, and, and so on. On the other hand, if we are dealing with uh, with human societies, and we know that that uh, human we are complex, then uh, perhaps to take into account that complexity, we could rely on experiments to know if our assumptions uh, make sense or not. No? To this end, we have performed a series of experiments to measure reputation. That is to uh, measure how people evaluate uh, other guys' actions and how they reciprocate to those actions. No? Then in, in those uh, experiments, we found that uh, when evaluating a, 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 another agent, people used to take into account uh, uh, a number of last actions, but they don't wait in the same way all the actions, but uh, wait much more the last action than the rest uh, of, of those in the memory. That is, we found that people uh, take into account a uh, weight uh, mean of uh, average uh, cooperation and uh, last action, 
waiting more the, the last one. It makes sense, no? Uh, one may be very, very good, but perhaps is at the very last moment they make something bad to you, then um, you will take it more into account that lax action is human nature, it seems. Okay, then with the results, let's go back to that theory and uh, we propose a, a, a model for studying a cooperation under uh, the second order reputation idea. Uh, in this model, we have two uh, mechanisms uh, that is the second order reputation and uh, the memory uh, evaluation. We studied uh, this through the donation game, which is probably the, the, the simplest uh, game ever for cooperative issues. As you know, the uh, don uh, donation games uh, deal with uh, agents that donate or not uh, an amount to are uh, recipients. Then if the donator uh, gives that amount to, to the recipient, uh, the, uh, the amount is multiplied, but uh, the, uh, the agent that donates it uh, have to pay the cost uh, of donation. At the end, uh, in, in the global amount, uh, the donation uh, enhances the, the, the common uh, good because the, there is an enhancement factor, but it, it has a, a cost for the, the focal agent for them that gives the, the, the money. In our uh, model, we have three uh, strategies that are uh, unconditional cooperators, all C, unconditional defectors that we call all D and the discriminators. And uh, discriminators act according to one of the uh, second order assessment rules that I mentioned before. We have studied separately uh, these three uh, second order assessment rules. That is, uh, uh, or shunning, or stair judging, or image scoring, or simple standing uh, for its uh, model or for its uh, realization independently. And uh, in addition, there is also a imitation rule that uh, takes place at the end of each generation. That is, we have two time scales. One uh, that is payoff independent and uh, that consists of cooperative defectors and discriminators, which take into account other ac uh, agent actions, but not payoffs. And finally, a uh, longer time scale with an uh, imitation uh, rule that take into account uh, payoffs. Okay. This model can be solved uh, through a mean fill up uh, approximation. The details are here in, in the paper, but actually the, the formulas are quite simple. And this mean fill approximation reproduces the numerical simulation results, which uh, I'm presenting here. Uh, on top, uh, we can see the cooperative level for the four. Uh, uh, evaluation rules, shunning, stair judging, image scoring, and simple studying. And we can see that um, the stair judging rule is the one which presents a higher level of operation. And on bottom, we can see the uh, fraction of strategies uh, in the stationary state, that is for the four uh, rules we can see the fraction of discriminators, all D, or that is uh, unconditional defectors, and unconditional cooperators. 
We can see that uh, intolerance uh, hinders uh, cooperation under uh, shunning, stare judging, and imagining score rules, but uh, uh, counterintuitively, uh, that intolerance promotes uh, cooperation under simple standing rule. Sorry, I think that uh, I forgot uh, saying what is intolerance. When uh, discriminators evaluate uh, the, the image of, of the, the other agents, they evaluate the, the last actions, waiting the last action more, and then if that uh, reputation uh, is above and uh, and tolerance threshold, then they evaluate it positively, and otherwise they will evaluate it uh, negatively. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, we show that uh, a stair judging rule, as I said, uh, despite it's a positive rule in the sense that uh, those agents evaluate uh, more actions positively than other rules uh, is uh, the, the, the rule that show the, the lowest uh, values of, of cooperation. And I think that uh, that's all. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Very interesting presentation. Um, does anyone has a quick question? Well, you can. I just want to remember that you can always ask the questions also uh, in the chat, so the speakers may even uh, reply while other presentations. So since we are a bit late, we will go then to the next presentation. Thank you, Carlos, again. Um, and now we will have Emiliano Alvarez uh, presenting agent-based models and simulation in social science sciences. Uh, bibliometric review. Carlos, I will need you to stop sharing your screen so Emiliano can share his. Mm. Carlos? Well. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, well, um, well, I have a video, so should you I start with the video? Yes. Okay. Three million. Okay, in a second. Okay, you can see it? Uh, I'm seeing, so, yes, start playing so we can just check that we can hear it. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, you, can, you can hear it? I don't think so. No. 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 Okay. Give me a second. Sure. on dynamic, uh, dynamic dynamics. Well, I want to thank your name. I, uh, there, yes. you can hear the answers of this event, especially with the big okay. Well, I well, want to well, start. To thank the organizers of this event, especially with the big to carry out an event this year, also to my co-authors and the research group on dynamic, uh, dynamic dynamics. In this presentation, we are going to present the results of a bibliometric review uh, analyzing the articles and social simulation that follow the principles of the ODD protocol. Then we will show the comparison with the articles that use ABM in social sciences and see the similarities and differences between both sets of works. A first conclusion that we advance is that they form groups that deal with different topics which indicates that this standard for ABM documentation cannot yet become a standard, but the penetration has been an even so social uh, As first introduction, let's start by thinking about why we should use ABM in social sciences. There is a consensus as to what social simulation allows us. The possibility of observing macroscopic processes as an emergent process that arises 
from the interaction between simple agents. Now, why document it? It's, it's, it is important to note here that several authors show some problems that arise from the increasingly complicated models that are made to analyze complex problems with a higher degree of definition. There is a need to find a standard, a uh, common language, uh, lingua franca. And um, what is ODD? It is an acronym from the phase of, of the model documentation process. It is a protocol that does not arise from the social sciences, but from ecology, uh, and has evolved. Uh, the, the first works are from the 2006. The purpose of this protocol is to respond to these failures in the communication of the models, seeking to make their understanding and replication easier, at, at the same time that it seeks to ensure that the models are adequately described. And uh, here we show the structure of the model following the protocol. The phases have had uh, some small changes in these years. Many aspects of the protocol has been improved and clarified to make it easier for modelers to use. And uh, here we simply show some examples of other reviews carried out by ABM in social science. Uh, next, uh, we must think about some differential aspects of ABM in social sciences. These are the heterogeneity of behaviors, which includes uh, the analysis of decision making and the analysis of social dynamics. Um, here we are going to pose some of the questions we, that we propose to answer in this paper. The first is about whether a standard has been achieved to document ABM in social sciences. Uh, the second question refers to whether the ODD protocol has been introduced to social science and in which areas. From the data collect, we will also show which are the most develop, developed areas and the forerunners in each area. The third question uh, refers to whether we can find differences between the articles that follow the ODD protocol. Uh, and through the last question, we will look for evidence to support the claim that these protocols allow greater communication between academics and between disciplines. Um, the data attraction procedure that we carry out is similar to works of Trim and other authors of uh, 2010. We will take into account the articles that cite Grimm and other authors of 2006 and 2010. The data collect was taken from the Stopus databases. Uh, the data collection process was as follows. Uh, first, we retrieved the articles citing uh, Grimm and other authors of 2006 and Grimm and other authors of 2010. Then we filter by areas. We only take articles from the economics, social sciences, business, or decision sciences areas. After this filter, we have uh, almost 300 articles of each. Uh, finally, we eliminate duplicates, that is, documents that cite both articles. So in total, we work with 4,040 documents. Uh, now we will seek to analyze articles that use ABM in social sciences. For this, we carry out a new search in Scopus, which includes the concept of Asian pace, model, limited to articles in the same categories we mentioned ab uh, above. In total, the search allows us to work with a data set of 170 articles. First of all, um, we perform the co-citation analysis, that is, uh, two articles have a stronger link if they are cited by uh, the same time by many other articles. With Louvain clustering algorithm and follow three clusters, which refer to three different kinds of articles. In blue, we find the most cited articles of the data set and with greater centrality in the network. These articles have been the main link between ABM and the social sciences. In red, uh, we find the articles that are the methodological references, both in the ODD protocol and in the use of ABM as well and in the most commonly used of. In green, uh, we find a cluster of articles that are less central and that serve as a references for land use and land change. In, in contrast, we carried out the co-citation analysis in the other dataset and found two groups. In the red group, we, we, there are the most cited articles on the subject, that those that deal with the most important topics in ABM and the social sciences, economics and social syntech, sim, uh, systems as complex systems, fundamental articles in network analysis, among others. 
On the other hand, the blue group is made uh, with of some review articles and articles that seek to link the issues and sciences with the ABM. Here we note that the article by Grimm and other articles of 2010 is weakly linked with all, to the core of ABM articles. This is an indication that shows us that the ODD protocol has not yet managed to generalize its use in the social sciences. Uh, within the keywords, we have uh, two data series, the keywords that select by the articles and the keywords that are assigned by Scopus. We show both rankings uh, here and we'll now try to rank these keywords in four different categories. Uh, first, uh, the importance of the agent based approach is highlighted. In, as we can see in both classifications, it is among the most used keywords, also linked with other important ones. Then uh, something that is not surprising is the importance of simulation and numerical and computational models. Simulation is a fundamental aspect of these models. Third, uh, we show some empirical and the methodological aspects, such as validation and replication. These are aspects related to the possibility of further communication. Fourth, we mentioned some of the topics mentioned, uh, the analysis of decision making, economics, land use, and ecology. Uh, now, we show the list of the 10 journals with the most uh, publication in this topic, both with uh, articles that sign green, and also within the ABM dataset in social sciences in general. On the one hand, the journal that with the most publication appear in both lists. So we can say that these journals have published articles that follow the ODD protocol and articles that do not. In a way, they serve as a link between the two pieces of literature. Again, it just appears as the journal with the highest number of publications on the subject, which supports the mentioned reviews. On the other hand, we find differences with, with the classification of the literature that follows the articles of Grimm and other authors. Now, many economic journals appear on, in the list of the, of the right, new journals are involved, which suggests that in particular, the ODD protocol has not achieved significant advances in economics. We also appreciate that journals with a broad spectrum disappear from the list which may mean that uh, there are differences in the level of integration of the different disciplines. That is, we find more multidisciplinary work journals and topics in the document that I came with articles. Uh, here we can see two graphs uh, where we can appreciate the level of regional and international collaboration of the research centers. On the left, we have uh, the network of countries, and on the right, we find the network of research centers. Then we construct the same network, the same network from the other dataset. And what results we can extract from these networks? In the first instance, the most important research centers are in the United States and Western Europe. And almost all the research centers that work on the subject are placed here. On the other hand, there's the research centers that have participated in the most relevant works on the subject are in terms of those who managed to connect research centers from different regions of the world. And in this network, we have uh, many countries that are linked to only one of the central countries. And there are many that are disconnected from the network. The country network is a uh, star shape in both cases. Uh, but now uh, let's look at some metrics of collaboration networks to learn more about how information circulate in, on, in this network. Uh, first of all, all of these networks are small network, uh, small world networks. On the other hand, let us know the density of the networks. The networks of research centers and countries of the dataset that follow the ODD protocol have more links per node, higher sensitivity, and a lower average path length. Uh, well, that is, uh, information circulates more fluidly through this network than in the network of ABM social sciences. As, as we indicated, uh, a possible explanation for this fact is that uh, this protocol allows better communication between researchers and facilitates the replication of the models. Well, finally, we come to the conclusions. Uh, here we seek to answer the four questions we previously posed. Uh, the first question was related to the advances of the protocol in social simulation. Uh, the data allows us to affirm that there's been some progress 
but it is not yet a standard in social sciences. It has made more significant progress in some issues, while its progress is limited in others. Um, uh, well, the discipline where the greatest advances were made were in the edges of ecology and economics. Uh, the third question uh, refers to the characterization of the literature that followed the ODD protocol with respect to those that do not. Uh, we can feel that in the topic networks, the country's networks, and the networks of research centers, uh, we can find differences. Uh, that is different point to greater discipline, multidisciplinary work in the architects that follow the ODD protocol. And this brings us to the last question. Uh, we can say from the analysis carried out that this is a greater flow of information in this network, and these networks cover multidisciplinary topics. Well, uh, we propose some extensions, such as using other databases, such as Web of Science, Web Scholar, or other preprint repositories. And a future extension is to analyze how the ABM digital tool analyzes social simulation and learning. And for full-term analysis, we also propose to carry out a comprehensive bibliometric analysis of the modification that the complex system approach has caused in the study of the social sciences. Well, uh, thank you. Well, I want. Thank you, Emiliano. Uh, we have time for a very quick question. Uh, if someone wants to ask something, I can just ask ask uh, something very quickly so okay. are, are you considering also for example i was just remembering about uh, some some of the ai conferences that also have a lot of proceedings and so on that could be also very interesting to compare this kind of community of uh, papers that are exploring a lot of agent-based modeling social learning and so on um since you are considering to have uh, more uh, sources of papers and so on uh, it's just a suggestion, even not so much of a question. I don't know if you had considered those papers in your study. Uh, sorry, uh, which are the sources, do you say? I, I can send you later. So there are some conference uh, of AI, specifically of AI, but they have a lot of perceiving uh, well. Oh, so yes, of course, of course. Them. And there you can also maybe find some difference even in some different communities of AI that do agent-based modeling in these protocols and so on. So it was more like a suggestion, sorry, not so much of an ask. Uh, okay. okay, okay, we'll look at it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So if we don't have questions, uh, I will go to the next speaker and the next speaker is me. So <laughs> um, I will share my screen. So first of all, thank you all for bearing with us until the very last presentation of this session. Let me check if I am able to share my screen. I believe so. Let's. Can you see my screen? I will believe that you can. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I'll be presenting then this last presentation. Uh, the topic is then revealing semantic and emotional structure of suicide notes with cognitive network science. This is a joint work with Simon, Trevor, and Massimo that started in a winter workshop on complex systems in 2018. And we are now finalizing it. So we appreciate all the feedback. So let me check. OK. And just to take, OK. So the focus of our work um, as the title said, is suicide notes and effect, for example, for 2020, even though this is a topic that is not uh, so much talked no, uh, nowadays. The death by suicide in Japan, for example, in October 2020, was around uh, 2,100, while death by COVID, the main topic of our society at the moment, and of course, with reason, um, was a little bit lower. Uh, I decide just to put this, this statistics. So we put a little bit into perspective the importance that uh, uh, suicide ideation also has in our society. And of course, this uh, suicide ideation, uh, we say here that is the creation of this distorted then mindset that changed the way that people perceive uh, the gravity of suicide. 
And uh, as you can see by the notes, sometimes they are uh, not so heavy, but even though um, this is a, a societal problem that we have that we don't talk so much about. And in our study, we are using 139 genuine suicide notes. Uh, and we are approaching these suicide notes with the cognitive network uh, science perspective in the sense that we construct uh, networks from these notes. So in our original study, we construct two types of networks, co-occurrence networks that capture then the citatic relationship between the adjacent words. And then we also construct uh, an SVO network, so a subject verb object network that captured the triplets of these syntactic relationships. Both these networks are then enriched uh, with sentiment and emotional labels. So we take into account also the balance of the words that represent nodes uh, in these networks. So in our, uh, in our paper that is on archive, the first version of our paper, we also have some studies uh, in the SVO network, but on this presentation, I will focus on the analysis on the co-occurrence network. So we build uh, upon this cognitive network science, psycholinguistics, and also semantic frame theory to introduce this network representation of the mindset that is expressed in the suicide notes. So this allows us to track not only which words appear often, but also how they are used in what context. So our intention here is that this can potentially reveal how concepts are perceived, organized, and in the interconnected in the human mind. So in this presentation, I will tackle two main questions. First, what is the impact of the connectivity between the words, so the syntactic relations between the words that have different valence in the structural balance expressed by the co-occurrence network? And then I will go briefly um, talk about the emotional profiles that are expressed by the semantic frames of uh, two of the most prominent uh, uh, words in the suicide notes uh, represented by the CO network. But let's go first then to the structural balance theory and uh, what are we finding in these co-occurrence networks of suicide nodes. In a very quick uh, uh, note, so, so the structural balance theory is a theory from social and cognitive sciences that study how when positioned in a triad with positive and negative relations, um, this triad is more or less balanced. In the sense, balance here means if there is any tension among the participants in a triad. And for the triad to be balanced, uh, the product of the relations of the signs must be positive. In fact, what does this mean in terms of social uh, sciences theory? So we consider triad balance, for example, in the, in the configuration, the friend of my friend is my friend. And also when we have this kind of alliance, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And then the other two uh, triangle configurations are considered unbalanced in the sense that there is always some tension. For example, the third triangle, I usually uh, give the example of a love triangle when we have two people competing for a, a third one or when you, you have a group where no one is actually friendly or you don't have any kind of agreement between the, the entities of that group. So the, the reason why we use structural balance, it's because this theory has been used to model not only adaptive behavior in the sense that um, we see how people tend to avoid uh, unbalanced triads and tend to change and adapt their uh, emotions towards other people to be uh, in a more balanced uh, configuration. And also it was shown uh, recently by Xiang and colleagues that when people are faced with cooperative decisions regarding social dilemmas, individuals show activation in brain regions associated with cognitive dis dissonance when positioned in these uh, unbalanced triads. So this in fact reinforce either theory about structural balance that people are very uncomfortable when positioned in some kind of discomfort mindset. We cal then we calculate structural balance here uh, by first building a sign network in which we will, we will put the positive and negative relations as signs in the edge. 
And a, a sign network is balanced if all its cycles, in this case, if all uh, the triangles are balanced. As, as I said before, a cycle is considered balanced if and only if the product of the signs is positive. And in the end, the degree of balance is just the ratio of these balanced triangles over all the triangles in the network. So in our case, our co-occurrence networks, we have the balances in the word. So in fact, we have signs in the nodes. So we need to build our sign network inferring the signs of the edges based on the balances of the words. So we build our sign network putting a positive uh, sign each time we have two positive words or a positive and a neutral word. And we have a negative uh, sign each time we have a negative uh, word. So it, this will always create a negative relationship. Among all balanced and unbalanced triangles of structural balance theory, we cannot obtain the, that uh, unbalanced triangle that is shadowed in gray because there is no, co no configuration between positive, negative, and neutral words um, that will lead to that unbalanced triangle. But even with this fact, we still have uh, an almost half-half possible uh, balanced and unbalanced configuration. So there is another detail here that is when we have two neutral words, we consider for structural balance purposes that that link doesn't exist. So it's not contributing to a positive or a negative relation. To validate uh, statistically our model, we, besides building the sign network, actually, we also have two null models for this, uh, for this uh, co-occurrence network. So imagine this is just a toy example. We have our original network with the positive, negative, and neutral words. And then we build two new models. Well, the first one, uh, the configuration model, in which we keep the degree sequence of the original network, but we shuffle the, the edges. And we have a second null model in which we keep the structural uh, configuration, but we shuffle the valences uh, of the word. So we are shuffling the sentiment labels as it, uh, associated with each node. With these two models, we are trying to evaluate, evaluate uh, what, uh, what is the comparison between the original network and, for example, then a syntactic shuffling or this uh, sentiment uh, label uh, shuffling. And our results actually show, so the first column is the original network, the co-occurrence network. We showed that the suicide nodes co-occurrence network actually has a very high uh, level of structural balance. And we see that this structural balance comes uh, mostly from all positive triads. So this goes in the direction of research that actually has shown that individuals have more compartmentalized self-perceptions. And uh, it is possible that the uh, highly balanced pattern that we observe uh, in the empirical network is actually indicative of some kind of psychological strategy for coping uh, with this psychic associated with suicidal ideation. We can see in the other two null models that they never have the same amount uh, of um, positive triads and actually that uh, the structural balance then of this empirical network really shows this more compartmentalized all positive concepts. But of course, the question that we have been receiving is, so, but what about comparing with other types of networks uh, and so on? So we now have a comparison with this free association network in this, and we did the same procedure to this network. And the free association network is just when people associate words. So I think in a word that now I will uh, create a link with other words that I associate this word with. And we can also observe that for this free association, so again, on the right panel, the first column, the first bar is the free association. We see that we don't observe the same high level of structural balance. And actually, we can even see that there is a, a more diverse uh, frequency of other uh, triads as, for example, the all negative and so on. So this reinforces our message that uh, analyzing these suicide nodes with structural balance, we find uh, 
a more uh, a level of uh, structural balance than we would expect by chance uh, in other networks. So now very briefly, and to conclude this presentation, I will look just to the emotional profiles of the semantic frames of these two prominent words in the CO network, so uh, life and love. And so the emotional profile of a word is, is calculated by counting then the fraction of words that are synthetically linked and uh, eliciting an emotion. So in an emotional flower, each direction indicates an emotion and each petal is a z-score when compared with the random sampling uh, for that specific emotion. So we can observe that life, that is a concept positively perceived in common language, um, eliciting pleasantness and positive emotions. And in the language of suicide notes, actually the semantic frame of life elicits no, posit no positive emotions. So life is kind of, in the suicide notes, is kind of devoid of positive and negative feelings. While love, for example, was found to be not only the most prominent uh, word um, uh, feature in the suicide notes, uh, but also they elicit joy and trust, indicating a positive perception of love itself uh, in the line with the positive perception that is typically attributed to it in common language. Uh, none of the, nonetheless, well, we also see that in suicide notes, sadness uh, is also present in the semantic frame of love, suggesting a more nuanced perception of this concept. So very quickly summary, we have reconstructed the mindset of people who committed suicide uh, as a cognitive network and of their language and notes. We were able to observe that the, the structural balance theory, and in this case, a high level of structural balance, can be a key mechanism that uh, has long been theorized to drive aspects of cognitive organization um, and is always very um, uh, connected with this uh, solving these conflict attitudes and beliefs. And also that the emotional profiles of prominent words like love and life show this quantitative evidence of uh, this distorted mindset occurring in the suicide ideation. Thank you very much. Uh, these are my colleagues, Simon, Trevor, uh, and Massimo. If you have any question, I can answer it very quickly too. And thank you for being here until the end. Nice, nice talk, Sophia. I do have a question if I may. So sure, 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 go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think you said that, but uh, I didn't capture completely. When you compare the uh, empirical network, uh, the core, the core occurrence network with the configuration model and the shelf of the labels, uh, the, the distribution of the structural balance, they, between core occurrence and configuration model, they, they show some similarity while the shuffles, they, they diverge a lot. Uh, what 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 uh, that can tell us for 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 the, your study? Yeah, so the intuition here is that um, the way that uh, not only so because with the configuration model we are still keeping the degree sequence, but we are then just uh, shuffling uh, the the edges. While mm -hmm. when shuffling the, uh, the 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 sentiment labels, we are kind of putting this valence like position in they can go to anywhere in the network and so what so with what we are concluding from this is that this uh, emotional uh, structure is much more important than the syntactic structure of the network okay. um and, and that's why um we we are like reinforcing this message that the fact that we encountered the the higher percentage of all positive triads concentrated in the co-occurrence network is because we perceive that uh, the way that the, the connections, the synthetic connections are made, we only can get clusters of positive words while maybe the negative words that they exist, they may be connected, for example, with neutral words and so on, but they never close in a triangle that will elicit then this positive or this balance or unbalanced state. So that is our uh, for now take home message. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you.
Uh, there is a question. It is possible to predict societal behavior based on those feeling indicator. For example, the combination. Okay, so what we believe is that, uh, thank you for the question first, uh, uh, Kave. Uh, very interesting. Uh, so for now, our aim is not to predict anything. So we are creating this framework in which we create the, the networks of the suicide nodes. We are analyzing and extracting properties and trying to understand and what is the mindset, what is all, all the, the cognitive setting that is behind of the suicide nodes. If we believe that maybe these characteristics that we are using can one day contribute to some predictors, machine learning methods and so on, maybe, yes. But for now, our aim is not predict anything. We are just extracting and studying all these cognitive mindsets that we can extract from these networks. Okay, a last question then. Are you taking any kind of declination for constructing the networks? I would guess there might be a lot of negation. I don't love it. so for the co-occurrence networks plus we are not doing that uh, yet but yes that is a very interesting question and uh, for sure we can explore what would be the effect on that thank you uh, so I don't know if you want to uh, say anything or show your faces say goodbye <laughs> um, Thank you so much all for being here until the end. Um, and well, uh, thanks for being part of the conference. Thank you for being here. Hope you are well and safe. And hopefully we will see each other again in person in the next years. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, Sophia. Bye. Ciao.